Greetings, my name is Melissa Beck and I am a literacy coach for the Mississippi Department of Education. Today we're going to discuss the literacy focus of the month in action. September's focus is morphology for content specific vocabulary containing affixes and roots. The State Board of Education's vision and mission the vision is to create a world-class educational system that gives students the knowledge and skills to be successful in college and the workforce and to flourish as parents and citizens. The mission is to provide leadership through, through the development of policy and accountability systems so that all students are prepared to compete in the global community. The State Board of Education goals five-year strategic plan for 2016 through 2021. All students proficient in showing growth in all assessed areas. Every student graduates high school and is ready for college and career. Every child has access to a high quality early childhood program. Every school has effective teachers and leaders. Every community effectively using a world-class data system to improve student outcomes. And every school and district is rated C or higher. Our session goals. The first session goal is the literacy focus of the month, the purpose, to discuss the power of morphology and how it improves vocabulary acquisition, to identify examples of morphemes, and to explore morphology instruction and activities. The purpose of the literacy focus of the month is to provide guidance to administrators and teachers for supporting a monthly school-wide instructional focus based on best practices and research-based strategies in literacy. The literacy focus for September is morphology for content-specific vocabulary, affixes, and roots. The power of morphology, improving vocabulary acquisition. Morphology is the study of words, how they are formed, and their relationship to other words in the same language. Morphology analyzes the structure of words and parts of words, such as stems, root words, prefixes, and suffixes. The power of morphology. Morphology is one of the often overlooked building blocks for reading, fluency, reading comprehension, and spelling. Research is now demonstrating the importance of strong morphological teaching as early as first and second grade. Awareness of morphology has been shown to be a strong indicator and positive influence upon reading comprehension. Direct instruction of morphology is an effective means to help with understanding and applying word structure for decoding, spelling, and vocabulary study. Students with strong morphological skills possess a distinct advantage over students who use a whole word approach to decode words by breaking them into parts to predict the meaning. Students who learn how to attach meaning to parts of words are empowered to be better readers and spellers. Example of morphemes. Morphemes are meaningful word parts. There are three types of morphemes that we're going to discuss. The first is roots. A bound morpheme used to form a family of words with related meaning, root or combining form, an example, inspector or thermal. The derivation of a word formed an existing word, root, or affix, like electric or electricity. Affixes modifies a root word's meaning, like a prefix or a suffix. An example of a prefix is re, un, or dis, or a suffix able, uh, iv, or li. Unlike bound morphemes, free morphemes can stand alone, and we call these base words. Here are some examples of morphemes and building words. You can see that we've given some examples of one, two, and three morphemes. If you look at the bottom for the desire, able, and itity, here we form the word desirability, and you'll notice that spelling changes when the three morphemes are combined by dropping the E at the end of desire and the E at the end of able. More examples of four morpheme words and then more than four morpheme words. Ungentlemanliness would be an example of one that has more than four morphemes when you're combining five word parts. Incorporating morphology instruction and activities. Morphology should be taught as a strategy. In order to break a word down into morphemes, students must complete the following four steps. First, they must recognize that they do not know the word. Second, they must analyze the word for recognizable morphemes, both in the roots and affixes. 
Thirdly, they should think of a possible meaning based upon the part of the word. And then fourth, they need to check the meaning of the word against the context of the reading. One activity that can be used is the list group label sorting activity. A word sort is a word study activity that involves students comparing, contrasting, and classifying words, considering words from a variety of perspectives. You can complete a closed sort where the teacher provides a specific category into which students assign these words. An example, you group the words into any morpheme meaning opposite. Or you can complete an, an er, you can com complete an open sort. Students are able to group the words into categories and then create their own labels for each category. Example: I grouped these words together because they all contain morphemes meaning before. This activity would be an independent activity only if Greek and Latin roots and affixes have already been studied. It could be adapted to all subject areas by choosing different words. When you are completing the list group label sorting activities, you will need a sorting mat, cards with words and morphemes, the directions to complete the activity, complete the sort as a class, in a small group, or independently, and then check and discuss. Some resources that could be used for this activity are pre-created word list, anchor charts to reference, and color-coded cards for quick assessment. The next example activity is a divided circle map. Students create a word map with, with different sections. These sections can be adapted to fit the instructional objectives. This activity can be an independent or group activity. It can be adapted to all subject areas to help it build content vocabulary. When you're completing the divided circle map, you will need the word map graphic organizer, a list of Greek roots and Latin stems common to your content area. During the guided or independent practice, they can complete the sort as a class, in a small group, or independently, and then you would check and discuss. Resources that could be used for this activity are pre-created word list and an anchor chart for reference. Some of the extension activities for the divided circle map, you could have students locate words in a text. You could have them change the category requirements. One example of this is instead of creating a sentence, students could locate a sentence containing that word in the text or that morpheme in the text. Locate words from other disciplines that contain a morpheme, like including a science or a history content word. Place multiple blank charts around the room and distribute cards for students to place on the correct chart. Once cards are in place, students could develop a definition from the discussion about given cards. These are some additional morphology activities. A concept wheel, write a root word in one quadrant of the circle and have students brainstorm other words that contain the same root word to write in the other three quadrants. Or world word building. They would start with a root word and build new words by adding a prefix or suffix and then continue by adding another. Here are some additional resources that we've provided and our contact information if you need any more information about this morphology section. Greetings, my name is Melissa Beck and I serve as a literacy coach with the Mississippi Department of Education. This month's secondary literacy focus of the month deals with morphology. Morphology is the study of words, how they are formed, and their relationship to other words in the same language. Good morning, students. This morning we're going to continue to talk about Latin and Greek roots. Today we're really going to focus on one specific Latin root. If you remember from previous lessons, we've talked about how roots are pieces or morphemes in words that carry meaning. Okay? So what we're going to talk about is different pieces of words that carry different meanings and sometimes when they're combined they change the meaning of words. These words come from or these roots come from other languages. These languages are now combined with the English language and that's how we've created some of our words. So the first word part we're going to study is called port. P-O-R-T. Now. We're going to start thinking of some words that contain the morpheme port to help us gather what the definition could possibly be of port. Okay, so one example that I'm going to give you is portable. 
Does anyone have an idea of what they think port could possibly mean just from the word portable? Yes, ma'am? <coughs> Okay, you think about a portable charger. Very good. And what is it about a portable charger? <coughs> okay, if you're on an airplane and you need a phone charger, you could use your portable charger so you could take it with you. Correct? Okay. Let's look at another sample word and see if we can gather what port means. Okay. Another example is deport. Does anyone know what deport means? If I say, um, I'm so sad because one of my friends had to be deported back to another country. Okay, move away. Yes, they had to move away. And when you're deported, you have to move away by force. Someone makes you move away. Okay, so we're still kind of, we're seeing that Portable meant you could take it with you. Deport meant you had to move away. Another example word, export. Does anyone know what export means? No one? Okay, export means um, to get goods and you're gonna take them to another country. So if we make something in the United States, we're going to export it to Mexico, okay? So again, we're seeing that that also means to do what? To move away, okay? You're ahead of the game. You've got a good one, transport. I'm gonna add it to my list and we're gonna talk about it in a second. Okay, so he provided a sample word, transport. What does that mean? Okay, so you could send something on an airplane to another country. So we have gathered that port means to what? To move something. So we're going to give it the definition to carry. Because when you pour, you something is portable or you export or you transport, you're carrying it to a new place. Everybody okay with that definition? Okay. All right. Now we're going to put some pictures of sample words in picture form. And you got ahead of me and one of them was transport. So here we've provided a picture and you see that you can transport by boat airplane, train, or vehicle, okay? So this would be our sample picture for transport. And then we have another picture. Now, this one's gonna be a little harder. Let's see if anyone can get it. This is a person who's carrying luggage into a hotel. Does anyone know what this person is called? Okay. Think, if you think of it again, raise your hand. I'll call on you again, okay? Anyone else have an idea of what this person is called? Okay, a doorman. So the doorman at the, the hotel is the person who holds the door open and lets you walk in. This is the person who carries your luggage. Luggage carrier. You're right, he is a luggage carrier, but his technical name is called a porter. And that's spelled just P-O-R-T-E-R. So his job is to carry your luggage into a hotel. Okay. Now, we want to create a sentence here using one of our sample words in this block. Can anyone give me a sentence using any of these words that they would like to choose? Yes, sir. I transported my dog to Mexico. Okay, let's talk about his sentence very quickly. His sentence gives us what transport means. It shows that he took his dog from here to Mexico. He carried it somewhere. We don't want to put in this blank, I like to transport, because that doesn't tell us what transport means, correct? All right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to break you out into groups in just a minute, um, and each group is assigned an envelope. And on the envelope, it has the word part or the morphine that you're going to use in your group. So if you follow our example, the word part goes where? In the middle. Then we have the definition, the picture, the sample words, and the sentence. For the picture, you're just going to draw it, okay? We don't have any to put in there. Now, when you are working, if you get stuck, you're allowed to reach in this envelope and pull out a hint. So in each envelope, there's a hint. So 
don't feel like I'm going to be circulating the room and helping you, but if you get stuck, don't feel like you just have to sit and wait on me. Pull out a hint and it'll help you. And it tells you, it'll say either this is the definition of this word, this is a sample word, or this is the sentence. But I want you to work in the same order that we worked. We started with the word part, then we tried to think of sample words, then we tried to decide what our definition was. Because some of these you may not know, but others like try, T-R-I, they may already know what that means. Do y'all know what that means? Okay, somebody in that group already knows what that means, so you can start there if you already know. But we want you to try and gather the definition from the words. Okay, now before we start in our groups, there's one statement I want to make. This word does not make sense. Okay, so I'm going to give you the word proportion. A portion or part in its relation to the whole. This word contains the, the morphine port, but it doesn't carry the same meaning in this word. The way that morphemes are combined or used differs in words of Anglo-Saxon, Latin, and Greek origin. So I already told you that these were pieces that came from other languages. So technically, this word, proportion, actually comes from the P-O-R-T-I-O -O morpheme. And so it carries a different meaning than just the P-O-R-T. So my disclaimer to you is all words will not fit in your definition. So you may come across a word and you're like, how does that, that doesn't mean carry, like we used port to carry, that doesn't mean care, any kind of carrying or moving something. Just remember there are going to be some words that will not fit. And when you get to those words, we'll discuss why those words do not fit. Okay? Any questions about your group, what you're going to be doing? Okay, so each group has a um, poster and some markers. Put your poster on the middle of your board, on the middle of your desk and get your markers ready. One person can write or y'all can exchange who writes on each section. And I'd like you to start working on this group work using your word part that you are given. So y'all's word part is try. Can anyone give me a sample word that contains the try? Triple. Triple, perfect. Okay, get it down for us, triple. Okay, now what does triple mean? Okay, triple means three of something. So does that give us a hint to maybe what try means? May mean what? Okay, may mean multiple things. Anybody else have a, an idea of what it may mean? Okay, let's think of another word. We know it may mean multiple things. Can we think of another word that has the T-R-I? Tribal, okay. You're saying tribal. Triple. Okay, we have triple. Any other words that you can think of? Tricycle. Tricycle. Okay, good. Get it down for us. Okay, does anybody know what a tricycle is? What is the definition of a tricycle? It is a bike, but it's a small bike with three wheels. Okay, so so far, what has been the commonality between a triple and a tricycle? We have three of something and three wheels. So what's the commonality? Both have three. Okay, so what's our definition going to be for try? Okay, three of something or just three would be fine. Okay, pull a hint if you're if you're stuck. And let's see what the hint has. Okay, so this is a sample word. Anybody know what the word is? Pianist. Okay, so a pianist, and it has the definition of person who plays the piano. Good. Okay, so here you can list that as your sample word. A pianist is a person who plays the piano. One strategy that can be used to assist students in uncovering these relationships is a divided circle map. This activity is located on page 15 of the Secondary Literacy Focus of the Month manual. The circle is divided into four equal sections with a small circle in the center. Each quadrant contains a different requirement. These requirements can be adjusted to meet the needs of the students or the standard. This strategy guides students to determine the meaning of the morpheme along with sample words that share that morpheme, boosting vocabulary in grades 5 through 8.
To complete this activity, students will need the divided circle map and a morpheme. Before students can complete this lesson, they must have knowledge of prefixes, suffixes, Greek roots, and Latin stems. It would be beneficial to teach these stems through vocabulary being used or synonyms for weekly vocabulary. Once students are ready for independent practice, the teacher can distribute the thinking map with a provided morpheme or morphemes and have students complete the divided circle map. This activity can be extended by asking students to locate sample words in a given text and provide context clues to support the definition of the given morpheme. This activity can also cross, cross content areas by requiring them to provide math, science, or history sample words. Hello, my name is Leah Hanna and I serve as a Regional Literacy Coordinator with the De uh, Mississippi Department of Education. As we transition to our next activity from this month's Literacy Focus of the Month, it is also important to note that morphology is a critical element for successful vocabulary development and accurate decoding. One strategy that can be used to improve vocabulary development is the group list label activity. This activity is located on page 18 of the Secondary Literacy Focus of the Month manual. Today's strategy has been modified for a sixth grade science class with different vocabulary. However, this strategy could be used in ELA, social studies, or math at any grade level by adjusting the vocabulary. Good morning. Good morning. Today I want us to work with the chart that we made on yesterday with our Greek and Latin roots. And I want you to remember that the Greek and Latin roots are word parts from a foreign language that we put with other words in English, other words or word parts, so that it makes a new word and cha sometimes changes that meaning. All right, the, we did the root, we did the definition, and we did an example. The root is anti, and the meaning is against. Right? And an example was anti-aging. And we said that anti-aging was like the products that we use to keep from looking older. All right. Bio, we said was? Life. And what was this definition of Bi biology? Aqua is water, and aquifer was our sample, and we said that aquifer was rock that was porous enough to hold water. Sub was under or beneath, and the example was subway. And what was the meaning of subway? To travel underneath to go places. All right, to travel underneath to go places, she said. Very good. All right. Semi, and we said that meant half, so the example was semi-annual, and that means that it's twice a year because annual is year, all right? Inter means between, and intercoastal was the example. Who can tell me intercoastal? Okay, she said water between two pieces of land. All right, very good. Photo? means light, and the example, photograph, photograph. and photograph is uh, light to take a picture. Right. Mono, one, monosyllable, means one syllable words, one syllable. All right, today we're going to use some of those, and we're going to put them with the word part that would make sense. I gave some of you word parts earlier, and we're going to decide, does that make a word with aqua, or does that make a word with enter? Because we're going to be looking at the definitions of aqua, so if it goes, if it's something to do with water, it's aqua. If it's something to do with between, then it's enter, okay? So um, we're going to start here. If you have a word card that would go with aqua, raise your hand, please. Okay, 
All right, would you bring your part up and tell us what word you made? I made, I made aquaplane. All right, aquaplane. Can you tell them what aquaplane means? It means a plane that can land on water. Okay, a plane that can land on water, he said. Very good. All right, um, you had a card for aqua? And the word would be? Aqueduct. Aqueduct. And what did we say? It means a hole in water. All right. Um, a hole, um, a ditch, or a um, creek bed that holds water would be an aqueduct. All right. Next one. All right. A clear. Okay, and what is an aquarium? A tank that fish go in. Okay, a tank that fish go in. So if fish go in it, we know it has to have what? Water. Water, very good. And she had a hard one because it's aquarium. And what have we been calling this? Aqua. Aqua. So that's an example of when we're using the word part, but we change the way we say it when it goes with some of these. Okay, the next one is enter. All right. Who has a card that goes with enter to make a word? Okay, what is your card? My card is state. Okay. And interstate means to be between two, two places that you can travel to. Okay, two places that you can travel to. Good. <coughs> so an interstate is a highway that goes between states. Okay, great. Next, who has another word with enter? My word is venue, intervening. Intervening means, it means someone between who has a coffee. Okay, very good. All right, intervene means uh, that you are getting between somebody that has a conflict. Okay, great. And I like those big words you used. All right, next, who has one for enter? Okay, and it makes the word interwoven. Okay, do you know what interwoven? Can you tell us what that is? All right, what do you think of when you think of woven? When you weave something, what do you think of? Okay, it, with material, with your clothes. All right, interwoven means that it is two threads that are woven together. It's woven in so it looks like one piece. Good, good. All right, next what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you some little cards and a mat uh, to sort and I'm gonna divide you into groups to do that. So we're going to get ready to do a little activity, and I'm going to see if within your group you can figure out some more of these in a mat like this, but using different word parts. The you do part of the lesson would be to divide the students into groups and have them sort other roots and word parts.